There are many variables, track condition, driver changes, and plain old lady luck. Tonight, racing luck and post position could play a major role in determining the winner of our big race. In just a few minutes, 11 trotting mares will start their mile journey right there, and in less than six seconds, be around this clubhouse turn. But only one will come home with the Breeders' Crown. Speed is head on the outside. Sandy Ball looking to shake loose, followed by Carlin Lopel and Georgie LD. They're in the stretch. Baltic Speed takes the lead. Holy on the rail on the outside. Here comes Georgie LD, followed by Sandy Ball. Baltic Speed is going to win it all. And here comes Arm Road of Bona 3 wide. She's got full of trot. And here comes Bill O'Donnell with it now. It is all Road of Bona drawing clear at the rail. Narva ahead of her. Queen singing Davidia ahead of her. But the Breeders' Crown, Billy Trot, belongs to Arthur Devona. Lobel all out for the world record. Go get Ross Rose toe on the outside. Matt Lobel on the rail has the lead. That's Matt Lobel. Has the ball. 156 flat. <laughs> Tonight, live from Batavia Downs in Batavia, New York, 11 of the best trotting mares in the country go postward in search of a winner's share of a purse of over $268,000. Breeders' Crown 88 is being brought to you by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 Olympic team. This Bud's for you. By Armstrong Brothers, a world leader in standard bred breeding. And by U.S. Air, serving over 130 cities across the United States and Canada. The Breeders' Crown is a unique series of races. This year we're making 10 stops for 12 championship events. Delighted tonight to be in western New York. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Johnson. My partner on the broadcast, Stan Bergstein. Stan, I understand that several mares are in this race tonight and they've been kept in competition a whole year just to be here for this race. With good cause. As two and three year olds, they race against each other as fillies and there's a lot of money to be won. When they become four and in harness racing turn to mares, as the nomenclature goes, Despite what the feminists think, they are at a disadvantage racing against males. Mm -hmm. And to illustrate that fact, last year, seven of the 11 mares in this race won $100,000 or more, ranging up to the $820,000 won by Armbro Fling last year. This year, racing against males, only one of the mares, Ship's Dream, has won over $100,000. And there's quite a paycheck on the line this evening as we take a look at the purse money to be distributed. Stan, we have uh, mares from four through age seven. Now, are any of them at a disadvantage because of that? Not really, because of age. Once they reach maturity at four, they sustain and maintain that maturity right through eight or nine. In fact, in Europe, many of the top trotters are seven, eight, nine, even ten years old. So a full field of eleven promising a lot of action. The favorites actually a pair starting as one and one A coupled in the wagering both owned by the Armstrong brothers. With more on that, Kenny Rice. Thanks, Dave. The Armstrong brothers are number three among breeders in the Breeders' Crown competition. Their horses have won $1.6 million in this competition. Two of their stars are here tonight, Armbro Fling and Armbro Flory. And last year in the Breeders' Crown competition, they certainly were the standouts in their division. And as they trot around the final turn, in command, that's Armbro Flory. And now Keystone Harris coming on three wide. Armbro Fling the rail, victory, Lamont. They are in the lane. Armbro Flory, the one to catch. Here comes stable mate, Armbro Fling on the outside. It's now Armbro Fling, Armbro Flory. They drive to the wire, Armbro Fling in front. With me now, Dr. Glenn Brown, the president of Armstrong Brothers. And Dr. Brown, it's been an exciting year again for Armstrong Brothers, particularly the fact that Armbro Flory, who is getting some of the spotlight this year, she has won more money than her much-heralded stablemate. She's been very consistent, Kenny. She's been winning uh, at Greenwood in Toronto. She's got five wins, I believe five seconds this year, and 15 or 16 starts, uh, and racing an invitation company every week. How do you see the race tonight for Fling and Flory competing against the rest of this impressive field? I don't believe uh, Fling is right at her peak right now, but I believe Flory will be very tough. 
Uh, she raced last week in Greenwood and came within a fifth of a second of the uh, track record and did it in a, a commanding fashion. She's, uh, she's pretty sharp right now. Dr. Brown, good luck tonight. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Back to you, Dave. Now let's check the morning line. We'll see driver assignments. And uh, here we start with Armbro Fling, George Schulte, and Armbro Flory with Larry Walker, two to one, and you get two for the price of one. Sarah Gal with Tom Strauss starts at eight to one. Free token with Joe Pavia Jr. at 12, one of the long shots. At 15 is Frock with Carmen High. Cindy's Action with Donald Dancer at 12. Luscious Almahurst with Benny Webster at four to one. Scenic Regal, Harold Story Drives, and three to one, second choice in the morning line. Ship's Dream, six to one with Doug Brown. Erica's Impulse with Joe Adamski at 20, and 20 the price on Hap's Crown with Bill O'Donnell. Well, we'll be back to take a look at the horses in the post parade, and you can pick out your favorite for tonight's Breeders' Crown event. But first, these messages.